Hi, my name is Anna Marie Figueroa, and today I'm going to be talking about Under a Cruel Star, A Life in Prague by Hedda Margolius. So the memoir begins in Prague during World War II after the Nazi invasion where Hedda and her family are sent to the ghetto and later to a concentration camp in Poland. Um, at the concentration camp, both her mother and her father pass away. However, Hedda manages to escape and make her way back to Prague. Um, and you would think that after escaping, she would feel some sort of sense of relief, which of course was there. However, she did realize back in Prague, a lot of her old friends were willing to accept her due to um, anti-Semitism or because they would accept her, their lives would be put at risk. Um, so she feels a lot of the isolation and fear and spends a lot of her time hiding, outwaiting the war. Um, once the war ends, she is reunited with Rudolph, who is her childhood sweetheart, and they end up marrying and having a child named Evan. Um, Rudolph is very involved with the Communist Party. He's very idealistic and motivated, and he finds success when he's appointed to be chief cabinet um, of the Ministry of Foreign Trade of the Communist Party. So he gets involved with the Communist Party due to a lot of um, idealistic beliefs. However, shortly after, the um, party becomes corrupt, and him, as well as many others, start to deny the co corruptions of the party um, due to the their idealistic um, viewpoints out coming from the war. Um, Haida, however, does sort of notice this and start to fear for Rudolph. However, he remains unconcerned and idealistic, but later he is arrested and charged with the trial for anti-state conspiracy, um, where he, he is found guilty. So when Haida is out waiting the verdict of Rudolph, um, she suffers a lot of things such as poverty, sickness, isolation, um, as well as depression and anxiety. About a year later, she learns that he's actually been sentenced to death. Um, she visits Rudolph before his execution, where he, he instructs her to marry again. She then marries someone named um, Pavel and achieves some sort sort of stability in her life. However, um, and then in 1968, she participates in the Prague Spring, which is an uprising by the citizens of Czechoslovakia against Soviet rule. Um, by this um, uprising is soon stopped and the memoir ends with Haida leaving the country by train. Um, so uh, again, Haida suffers a lot in her life and although, although she escapes the camp, she does continue to struggle. So the struggle follows her when um, she goes back to Prague and there's a lot of an anti-Semitism and then she continues to struggle um, as her husband was passed away due to his involvement in the Communist Party and um, being executed. So her past always remains with her. However, she does manage to find some sort of peace towards the end of the memoir, um, although her life is tragic. So I'm just gonna go over a little bit of the themes in this book. So to start off, one of the main themes is freedom. Um, this is conveyed because in her life, she is often without any freedom at all, but she's still able to recognize the freedoms she does have and use that as a sort of inspiration to move forward. Um, she admires the grace and the freedom of birds to the point where she writes that she feels like a bird when she um, escapes the Nazi imprisonment. Um, freedom also leads Rudolph to an idealistic follower of the communist ideals. Um, and although this does eventually lead to his execution, a lot of the ideas of freedom continue to follow them. Um, another main theme of this story is isolation. And this is conveyed through the concentration camp where um, Hada is isolated um, from the outside world. And even after she escapes the concentration camp, she is still isolated in Prague. Um, and very few of her neighbors even offer any support after Rudolf is um, is arrested, she is yet again isolated. Um, she doesn't have him as a support system anymore. Um, a lot of the community shuns her and um, shunning continues for the years afterwards. So she continues to feel isolation throughout her whole life. Um, my personal thoughts on the story is, it's overall not really that difficult of a read. Um, it's relatively easier to understand and the story uh, 
keeps you on your toes. So it is always very, very interesting to read. Um, it is non-fictional, so there's, it's really not too hard to follow all around. And it is very interesting if you're kind of interested in more a his personal side of um, a historical event, I would really recommend the book for you. Um, I also did want to share some of my favorite quotes throughout the book. So I'm just going to start with the first one. This reads, I did not say much about Auschwitz. Human speech can only express what the mind can hold. You cannot describe the hammer that blows crush, that crush your brain. Um, so I really like this quote because it kind of shows how the atrocities that occurred at Auschwitz were sort of undescribable. And this to me really, um, this really spoke more to me because it kind of makes me understand that you can write about something in a book, but it, you're not really gonna understand the level of atro atrocious acts that occurred unless you were there. All right, um, this quote's a little bit longer, but I do think it was a little bit interesting because it talked about um, the regime side of things. So this one reads, it is not hard for a totalitarian regime to keep people ignorant. Once you relinquish your freedom for the sake of understood necessity, the party discipline for conformity with the regime for the greatest and glory of the fatherhood for any of the substituents are so convictingly offered, you creed your claim to the truth. So this kind of shows how once you kind of get in a mindset, and this was also showed through World War II with the Nazi regime as well as the Communist Party. You kind of have a closed mindset and ignore reality. So you'll ignore um, sort of the issues within that party for an idealistic viewpoint of something better that you're clinging on to. Um, and this is, this just so, sort of shows like more of a sheep mentality of people or how they can become sort of blind to what is going on in order to have this idealistic viewpoint that something is going to get better. All right, here's another quote that I really admired. Um, people came crawling out of their hideouts. They came back from the forest, from the prison, and from the concentration camps. All they could think was, it's over. It's all over. So this one kind of shows what, ha what occurred towards the um, when the war was over, how it was almost unbelievable. And I really did like, um, this quote really spoke to me because it's it just kind of like shows the shock of the people or um, maybe in a sense, hope that something is gonna get better. So yeah, um, I overall really enjoyed the book and I would really recommend that uh, you guys read it. Um, thanks for listening.